welcome to those of you who are joining us online. We are live from the School of Ministry tonight at Catch the Fire in Toronto. So say hello to everyone online. Uh, we've got a great night planned for tonight. Jeremy Sinna is here with his team leading worship, and we have one of our um, young adult campuses here at Catch the Fire that are here um, um, helping with the ministry team, and their pastor, Jonathan Chunker, is speaking tonight. So we're just going to hand it over to the worship team, um, get into God's presence, and then have some fun. <laughs> so let's make some declarations tonight.
Let's sing it. Hope will rise. Rise as 
hearts, O oh Lord. It is our desire, it is our intent.
desire. You are our goal.
Just, we just love your presence, God. And I don't know about you, but I, I could just sense such a, a tangible heaviness, wow, of the Holy Spirit through the worship. And, uh, and I, the picture I had was of, of being surrounded in oil. Wow. And I, I just sense that there was kind of the oil of the Holy Spirit um, here tonight. And I, I felt it was here for two things. I felt the oil of healing. Wow. His oil of healing is here for us here and for you at home online. And and, and that His healing oil is going to come and just uh, cover those places of sickness or pain and, and bring relief. And I also felt that there was the oil of anointing. Um, Ah, just to set, to be set apart. And I felt that there was a set apartness uh, tonight that God wanted to, to do in our hearts. So ah, first of all, let's, why don't we go after some of the healing? Because if, if God's saying, hey, I want to do some healing tonight, then I want to be part of that. God has healed me in the past of something that the doctor said was impossible. So I have a lot of faith uh, to see healing. So if you have sickness in your body here, if you have pain in your body, why don't you wave a hand? Because we have enthusiastic people who would like to come and pray for you. Uh, If you're online... uh, why don't you start writing in and our wonderful chat moderators over here, Andy, Keenan and Sean, um, they are really excited to be praying for you and some of our ministry team is going to be praying for you. One of the things I felt tonight was for the ears. Wow. That someone specifically with their right ear had some healing, hearing problems. Is there anybody in this room that has uh, hearing problems or with their right ear? I don't see any hands, so that may be someone online. So I, I just, uh, yeah, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your healing oil. And, and, and the prayer team people, I'm going to invite you to take the oil of, it, of healing blessing and pour it on the person that you're praying for. Hi. So if you are at home and online, um, I just pour out the healing oil of Jesus over you tonight. And I speak healing to every sickness and every disease. And in the name of Jesus, I just command you to leave their bodies. And I speak life. I speak life. I speak life into your body tonight in Jesus' name. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. One of the things that we love to go after here is healing because that's one of the things that that Jesus, when He was walking on the earth, walked and He walked in signs and wonders and miracles. And He said that we would do greater things than He did. And He did some pretty great things. He, we, he saw some phenomenal healings. And, and, you know, just as Isaiah 61 says, you know, the day of the sovereign Lord is upon us. Um, and that, that day of freedom is what Jesus brought to all of us. Not just, not just eternal life, but healing for our bodies, freedom from pain, freedom from sickness. Wow. So I want to encourage you to check your body for those of you who have been prayed for. And uh, check check the pain, see, see what changes happened. Thank you, God. And I want you to if, wave a hand if you've seen any change so far. Okay, Isaac is waving back here. Isaac, do you want to come and tell us what's happening? Your prayer team people can come too if they want 
I pulled most of the muscles in my upper body at the gym a few days ago. And um, just as we started praying, this arm is at least 50% better. And actually, even now, I can feel it loosening up. And I've been in pain for two days now. Um, and the rest of me still hurts, but that's pretty good so far. Okay, so could you not really do that before without pain? Actually, this would have been really painful just to twist the arm like this. But in fact, even now, it's just disappearing <laughs> in this arm. That's amazing. This one still hurts, but the other one is pretty much gone. Okay, well, let's get some ministry team over here to pray for him. Ah, well, Father, well, firstly, thank you. Thank you so much for this healing, Father. Thank you already for the, the, the healing and the freedom you've brought to his arm. And, Father, we just, we just say we want the whole 100%. Father, every muscle that uh, Isaac... Uh, uh, brought great pain to in the gym would you would you bring healing to it and you know what one of the amazing things is is that even sometimes even when the pain is the result of our own choices has anyone ever had that happen where you were in pain because of what you what you did you know what God still heals you then he's not like no dwell in the pain to punish you he, he's so filled with grace and love he's like oh let me pour out my healing on you even if what you did was the thing that caused you pain How's everybody else doing? Anybody else um, seeing any change? Wave a hand. I'm seeing a, a hand waved over here. Are you seeing some change? What's going on? Benjamin, tell us. This is another one of uh, our students, Benjamin. He's from France. Uh, tell us what's happening with you. Uh, it was just about my wrist. Uh, yesterday, I just fall down and my wrist after... Um, after sleep when I wake up today was really, really extremely painful. But each time I opened a door or something, uh, it was, I mean, uh, it was possible to really feel the pain. And they just prayed for me and yeah, Jesus restored it. Now I can shake it, move it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's amazing. That's my first one. Okay, uh, I don't know if all of you caught that, but uh, Benjamin was saying he fell on his wrist yesterday. Yeah. And he, um, it was, it was when he woke up this morning. It was an excruciating pain. You couldn't even open the drawer with it. He could, but it was painful. Could you do this with it? You can do that now. Could you do that this morning? Just, it would be amazing pain. And now he, they prayed for him, and it's totally fine. Not totally. It's still a little pain, but I mean, it's nothing compared to the other. Yeah, eighty-five. 85% better. Ministry team, people, come, let's pray for him. We want that full fifth, 100%. So Holy Spirit, thank you for what you've done so far. And Benjamin was saying it's his, your first healing that you've experienced. Yeah. Yay, God. It gets addictive. You just you start being like, why well, want more? So Father, we just ask for that full 100% healing for his wrist. Wow. Father, just heal any damage. And we just speak wholeness, kingdom of God, just come right now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you love to give good gifts to your children. Wow. Ah, thank you, Father. Father, I just pray that as, as Benjamin just witnesses your power now, God, that you would just build a faith in him, God, and build a boldness, Lord, to, to go for healings, God, to, to run with your power, Lord, to, to just declare your, your freedom and your healing over people's bodies, God. Yeah, and so we just, we, we bless you with that healing anointing. Wow, Father, would you anoint him? Wow, with a healing anointing, Father, that he would see tremendous miracles, tremendous signs and wonders. Wow, wow. Thank you, Father, that there would be a passion in him. Yeah, to, wow. Ha. Father, let, let him be a part of the healing revival that is coming to France, Father. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Wow. The Father loves to give good gifts to us. Did you know that? He's got some good gifts for you. How's everybody else doing? Anything more happening around? Oh, come on up. Wow. Well, um, last night I went to the youth games night and I was playing this game with swords and I fell over and I hurt my knee. Um, 
So this morning, it, I had to have like, well, I had like frozen strawberries on it last night that Claire gave to me, which was very kind. Um, but today, yeah, it was kind of, it was hurting me, so I couldn't really move that much, and I couldn't really dance, um, which is a bit annoying. But having said that, people are praying for me. Now it's about 90% better, so it's still it's a little bit tight when I do that, but it's way more movable, so it's really good. Okay, that's amazing. So Anna was saying that she was uh, falling at the youth, and, and that now that, that knee pain is 90% better. That just blows my mind. You know, so the, the, you know, all these little things, God just brings his healing. So ministry team people, come, come, let's pray for that full 100%. I love that today it's been like 85%, 60%, and 90%. I'm like, 92, we're moving up right now. So Father, I just ask for that healing for Anna, Father, for her knee. Father, you have just given her a gift of movement, a gift of worship, a gift of dance. And Father, we just bless that gift in your life. And Father, I thank you that it is, wow, it is something that is going to grow and increase. And we just bless your muscles. We bless your joints, your ligaments in the name of Jesus. We bless you to dance. We bless you to worship. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Ah, Jen, do you have something? God, I just even ask right now that you just come and fill her with your presence. Uh, that you just cover her with that oil, Daddy, that is in this room. That that just flow over her right now, Daddy, from her head to her feet. Uh, that everything that is against your will, Daddy, just be removed right now. And we just speak healing right now. We thank you that she is already healed, Daddy. Uh, that she has had that faith from the beginning, Daddy, that she is already healed. Ha. Uh. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. Oh, this is fun. I think this is, this is what part of being, being part of the family of God is all about. You know, you're like, whoa, what's happening over here? What's happening now? And coming alongside one another. If you're at home and you have sickness and you don't have these wonderful people gather, gathered around you to pray, don't worry. We are going to be praying for you. And you don't have to have someone laying hands on you to be healed. Anyone here who's been healed without having somebody else pray for them? Wave a hand. Okay, we've got a bunch of people. So people at home, you don't need someone else to lay a hand on you, or you could lay a hand on yourself. There's a hand, a legitimate hand. It just is your own hand. And uh, why don't we in the room, why don't we stretch our hands towards the people at home so that they have like a, I don't know, there's probably a hundred people in here um, kind of stretching our hands towards the screen. And uh, why don't we just kind of, speak out we release healing in the name of Jesus and we're doing it towards each one of you at home so one two three we release healing to you in the name of Jesus wow thank you father wow ah well welcome everybody that was that was wonderful come on do take a seat if you're here get comfortable if you're at home uh, my name is Sarah Jackson, and uh, I work here at the School of Ministry in Toronto, and it's our pleasure uh, to welcome you to our Thursday night live from uh, the School of Ministry Spiritual Gifts webcast. Now, for those of you watching online, uh, uh, Monday and Tuesday nights were the last night's uh, broadcast from Virginia Beach. They're stopping their broadcast, but we are continuing for the present time here from Toronto, and so we look forward to seeing you each Thursday. Thursday night. Uh, fear not, we are not going away. We have a wonderful lineup of speakers and worship people, and uh, the Holy Spirit turns up every Thursday. He's turned up every Thursday, hasn't he, Andre? Absolutely. Andre is just really our most faithful guest visitor here. I think he's been here every night um, from the beginning, and so he, he knows the Holy Spirit has been here every week. It's not just me enthusing about it. Um, we have our guys in the chat room. I just wondered if there was anything uh, going on in there, guys. Um, any people that we could pray for? Do, uh, maybe we could grab you a mic. Uh, let me grab a mic for you. I should have thought of this earlier. Here you go, guys. This is Keenan. So uh, are there any people with prayer requests in the chat room? 
I think our Skype link is not working well tonight. So um, I'm a, there, these, usually I have it on a little screen right down here, but tonight you are the little screen. Uh, well, not quite. Okay, so um, Bill was just saying he had bronchitis, so Papa would just let Bill mm. up right now and we'll just say that bronchitis has to go in the name of Jesus because it's not of you. We just lift him up to the cross right now and just speak full healing wherever he is right now. Yeah. Just bring healing to his body, Papa. Just bring yeah. peace to him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, one of the interesting things that I saw is I was like accepting all of the comments was um Somebody called Jude had hearing problems in the right ear, which was the word that you gave. So we just want to command that pain in the right ear to leave right now yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Um, and also somebody else um, also said they had pain in their right ear, which was also healed as well through the chat. So that wow, was awesome. thank you, Jesus. Yes. I love words of knowledge. It's like God gives you this sneaky insight into what he's going to be doing and totally raises faith in your heart. I know that part of my healing came from a word of knowledge from someone who was terrified and thought that really this word of knowledge could not be true. And, and so they were, uh, it was at uh, a Thursday night like this and they came forward and I, I've told some of the students here the story and they were like, um, I, I kind of felt God say maybe there's a person who's lost their sense of taste and smell and they they look like this cannot be true this is you know I've come up I've just thought this up and I'm like it's me it's me and this poor guy looks so surprised I've never seen anyone look so like really there's somebody and I totally saw a percentage change in the restoration of my smell and taste um, through that word of knowledge through the faith just released in me it was very amazing so thank you God for that tonight we'll probably come back to you later lovely chat room people so get ready for that uh, tonight I want to introduce some of our um, people from our new market campus uh, our young adult campus um, John and Hendria are here why don't you guys come on up and introduce your team. Um, we just love these guys to pieces. And uh, how many days are there left until you get married? Um, we're not really counting, but 71. <laughs> we're not really counting 71. Yes. Uh, so welcome. We're so delighted the two of you could be here tonight. John is going to be speaking tonight, which we are very excited about. So I wondered if you wanted to introduce some of your team, tell us a little bit about your campus, anything you feel like, really. Sure. Well, I'm John Shunker for everyone, and this lovely lady is... Hendria Vandenberg. Soon to be... Shunker. And, um, and as Sarah said, we're from Newmarket, and uh, we have some of our team here from Newmarket. We just planted a young adult church, which we started back in September, and guys, why don't you just stand up or come on up? Why don't you come on up? Come on up. And... Uh, just really quick, the, these, are, these are some of the guys, these are some of our leaders and leadettes, um, and they're incredible, incredible, fiery young men and women of God who are um, full of passion, full of the Holy Spirit, and it's our pleasure to be here tonight. A bunch of us have done the School of Ministry, a bunch of us haven't, and you know what? It's all good, because we're excited where God's taking us, we're excited what God's doing with us. So why don't we just go down the line, and um, you can just say your name and your age and um, what you're excited about. <laughs> wow, thanks, John. <laughs> well, I'm Nina. Um, yeah, I help John out once or twice a week at the church. Um, I'm excited about just Newmarket growing, Newmarket Young Adults growing, and it has been, and I, from just being there, it's just been a lot of growth for me, so I'm excited about that. Yay. Um, my name's Bruce, and I'm 20... One. Wow. I did have a birthday. Um, <laughs> and I'm excited about knowing my birth date and <laughs> things like that. No, I'm just really excited, just like Nina was saying, like, like I have been at Newmarket since it kind of began, and I was still kind of new at that point, too. And it's just kind of, I was saying to, like, people on Sunday, like, it's so cool how, like, we've grown so much already. Like, it hasn't even been, like, a full year yet, and, like, we're already growing so much, and it's, it's crazy what God can do. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm 21. <laughs> we'll use this one. I'm Jen. Hi. Most of you know me here. Um, hello to you out there in the world out there. Uh, 23 years old. Um, I've been with the church since the beginning. Um, the morning church actually was what brought me to God to begin with. Actually, I fell away a really long time ago. 
And it's just been an amazing experience for me being there and being able to pour into lives like I got poured into from the beginning. And it's just been this process of watching people step into who they're called to be in God. And it's just been this truly amazing experience that's like brought me so much growth from seeing the faithfulness of God in other people's lives. It's just been truly amazing. Hi, I'm Amy and I'm 19. It seems really loud. Um, I guess I'm just really excited just like seeing how much like even in the past couple of months people have been growing in our church. Like um, I've been able to get like to know a bunch of the girls at our church and just seeing how much they step out in God has just been amazing for me because I know what it's like to step out in God. So it's just been really awesome. So I'm excited about Jesus. I'm Clarissa. I'm 22 to soon to be 23. So my birthday is April 29th if you want to give me presents. I work over there for all you students. Just kidding. Um, I think one of the most like amazing things about the Young Adult Church um, or like since we've been like on this road has for me has been seeing like all of us like my friends um, just stepping up into like incredible crazy leadership abilities where you're like oh my gosh you can just see like that person has such a pastoral heart and is stepping out into that and so that's been like one of the greatest things for me is seeing um, my friends step up and take you know the lead and like pray for people and people get healed um, like out on the street whatever like all those kind of things just seeing them stepping out and taking the kingdom of God out there and that's been really really cool. Hey I'm Hector I'm 22 and I'm kind of new to the New Market area, and I've just started going out to the Young Adult Campus ever since they started. But uh, I'm really excited about the way we're growing. We're growing really quickly, and we're going to be getting a new building. And I'm really excited about that. So if you could, if I could request some prayer for that to get our building soon, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Woo. And I'm Andrew. I'm uh, well, 21. Um, I'm excited about Jesus. No. <laughs> no, it's really cool to see, like, how far everyone's come, like Clarissa was saying with the leadership team, and even, like, I feel like, especially in worship, we've really grown, just because I've been able to get involved with worship, so that's why I'm saying that, but no. <laughs> but yeah, like, just seeing how much we've grown and the church has grown, it's like, everybody's taking a step forward, it's not just, like, John is, and the rest of us are watching him, you know what I mean? We're all together, like, walking and growing with God, so it's really cool. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. The, the, the reason I asked them to share something very quickly, which they didn't know I was going to do, is, um, is because we all have a purpose. We all have a destiny. God has an incredible plan for your life, for our lives, and, and for us as a body, as, as the church. And when you start stepping into your destiny, it will bring you life like nothing else will. You'll find yourself growing. You'll find yourself being like, wow, God, I can actually do what you've called me to do. This is incredible. And it's amazing seeing how far they've grown, how far I've grown, how far we've grown together. And I encourage you, wherever you are, whether you're in California, Raleigh, Pakistan, India, Africa, Antarctica, we bless you in the cold. But wherever you are, step out into what God has for you because it will change your life. And uh, right now, I've asked Amy, Amy Taylor, our wonderful, wonderful young lady, to just to share a quick something. And guys, you're free to take a seat if you like. Or you can stand here if you want. It's up to you. But Amy, why don't you just share with us a little bit about what God's done with you? Cool. Okay, so um, I actually originally was part of the Sunday morning church, which is basically a family-focused church. And John was my youth pastor before he was my awesome cell leader and pastor now. And back when I first met John, I... Well, I had been, I'd come from a Christian family, but I wasn't really walking with God. And I was kind of in a place in my life where it was just like, eh. And John really kind of forced me. He did not force me, but, you know, I had no boundaries, so I was forced. And <laughs> um, he really forced me to, well, sorry, um, <laughs> to really kind of step out of where I was in my life, which was kind of crap. And when, like, I was asking God what I should say about this, because he'd asked me to share a certain part. And um, God really had the ability to take me out of my fear and into, like, who he is because of John being so awesomely pushy. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'll tell you just a quick little story. So how many years? Five years? 
five years ago, probably. Um, John convinced me to go on this quick little three-day missions trip to Quebec. It was like a little conference, and me being the innocent little naive girl thought, oh, I'll just go and I'll sit in the whatever. I'll, I won't be a part of it, but I'll, I'll go because that's, that, that's okay. I didn't really click that I had to pray for people, you know, being on this thing. I don't, I don't know how I missed that. But anyways, what? My exact words were to Amy were, Amy, would you like to come on this trip and help me pray for people? And she's like, yes. Of course. No, actually, she said no a couple times, but then she said yes, and it was awesome. And so she, we arrived at Quebec, and... and... And then he's like, okay, let's go, let's go pray for pre-ministry prayer, and we're going to get you all up and prophesying and praying. He wasn't talking to the youth about prophesying. It was just praying for the youth, by the way. It wasn't that intimidating, but it, it hit me like, oh, God, I don't hear from God. Oh, God, how can I pray for people? How can I speak in front of anybody? Oh, God like that but you know in my head because I wasn't that loud (laughs) and anyways I ended up having like a mass of hyperventilating fit on the (gasps) oh god I can't do this really high pitched too it was kind of oh yeah anyways but (laughs) anyways in that like god like totally is like shown me well show in the past showed me like where I was and like how a afraid I was of people and what people thought and it was like really like my fear had crippled me from doing anything like it wasn't even just public speaking it wasn't even just praying for speaker the strangers it wasn't just that it was everything and it's like God has so much showed me like how to see who I am and how to speak for myself and have a mind for myself and be grounded and centered in who he is and it's incredible like how God just shows up and he like totally wrecks everything that you've thought about you and how everything you've thought about him. And it's like, wow, God, you're so big and awesome. And that's pretty much it. And I'm really fast speeded talking. That's amazing, Amy. <laughs> it, it, the, the reason I asked Amy to, to share that was because um, she was like, I don't know if I can actually do this. I, I'm, I can't do this. And I quickly found out in Quebec that she didn't think she could do that because we were in pre-service prayer and I came over to my team and I said, you know what, guys, when, when you go out there and you start praying for people and Amy, that's all she heard and she looked at me and her eyes went wide and she's like, you mean we have to pray for people? I was like, yes, Amy, we have to pray for people. She's like, she broke down crying and hyperventilating and my poor little heart, I was like, oh no, I've crushed her. What am I going to do? I went over, I'm like, Amy, it's going to be okay. And we prayed. But you know what was incredible was that God met her in that. God met her right in that moment. And she stepped out. And ever since then, she's been on this journey of finding out who she is, finding confidence in God. I don't, I don't think five years ago she would have been able to stand up here and share that with you. And, I th- and seeing the change in Amy has been incredible. And the reason we want to share that with you was to show you that, yes, you know what? We all have some things in our lives that hold us back. But God is bigger and God is greater and God is far more able to do in your life what he is meant to do. Just say yes to him. So, Amy, thank you for that. Well done, Amy. I'm so proud of her. She's amazing. And if you don't know her, come up and introduce yourself. She's incredible. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. Well, um, tonight, I would like to preach to you from an empty pulpit. So let me just get my Bible. Thanks, love. Um, tonight, I have something that I would love to share with you. And that is something that God has been speaking to me probably for about the past two or three years. Um, my pastor previously, some of you may know him, Duncan Smith. Duncan used to be around here. Duncan's incredible, and he preached this sermon maybe about three or four years ago, and ever since then, it's just been kind of percolating and filtering through my mind, and God's been speaking to me more on it. So I want to share with you what, what God showed Duncan, what God showed me, and, and um, see what happens in your life as a result. So I'm excited. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Zechariah 4. Um, this is, I would like to bring some context to a very famous verse. A lot of us have probably heard it. Um, usually at some point you'll go up to someone and say, you know, I feel like God's calling me to do something really incredible. I, I feel like I'm called to travel to the nations. 
and they'll look at you and say, well, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And you say, yes, wonderful. And you walk away and you're like, what do I do with this? I have no idea what that means. Well, well tonight, I just want to share with you a little bit about that. So, Zechariah 4, we're just going to read um, most of the chapter, actually. And it starts off like this. And then the angel who talked with me returned and wakened me as a man is wakened from his sleep. He asked me, what do you see? And I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lights on it with seven channels to the lights. Also, there are two olive trees by it, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. I asked the angel who talked with me, what are these, my lord? He answered, do you not know what these are? No, my lord, I replied. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. What are you, a mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of God bless it, God bless, God bless it. Another translation actually says he will bring out the capstone to shouts of grace, grace to it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Who despises the day of small things? Men will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord which range throughout the earth. And then I asked the angel, what are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the lampstand? Again, I asked him, what are these two olive branches beside the two gold pipes that pour out golden oil? And he replied, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, I said. So he said, these are the two who are anointed to serve the Lord of all the earth. Great. Who's a little bit confused? I was when I first read this passage. Um, I'd like to share with you what God shared with me. But first, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for your goodness in our lives. God, I thank you for your love in our lives. God, I thank you for your grace in our lives. And Father, I ask that tonight you would open up our eyes, open up our ears, open up our hearts to see and to hear and to understand what you are saying to us in this hour. Father, I thank you that you are big. I thank you that you are wonderful. I thank you that you are full of grace and full of compassion and full of love and full of kindness towards us. And Jesus Christ, I ask that you would pour all of that out into our hearts. I ask that we would be able to run towards you with everything that we are, God, with everything that's within us, that we'd be able to run towards you and walk with you and hear your voice. Because, God, we love you, and you are amazing. We love you, Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you know that the past, that we are in a season of grace? Did you know that the past 2,000 years has been a season of grace? That God is saying to his church, that God is saying to us, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by your good looks, it's not by your talents, it's not by how well you can preach, it's not by how smart you are, it's not by how funny you are, it's not by how strong you are, it's only by my grace in your life. And we need to learn how to live in the grace of God. Because if we don't, we will actually cut ourselves off from receiving the very power that God has placed in our lives. If we don't understand the grace of God, we will forever live our lives as powerless Christians. We will never be able to fulfill the plans and the purposes that God has for you and for me. Because God has incredible plans for you. God, ha God has ideas and dreams for you that will blow your mind. That, will, that you will come, when you start doing what God's called you to do, you will look back at your life and say, Oh my goodness. I had no idea that life could be this good. And oh my goodness, I cannot believe what I'm doing. I, I am a pastor at Cast the Fire, and, and I consider it an honor and a privilege. I've grown up in the church and being here since 94. I, I grew up as a kid. I, I, I was a youth in the youth group here. And I never, ever wanted to be a pastor I remember I was, in, I was in Pakistan. I actually grew up in Pakistan. I moved here when I was eight. And I was in Pakistan, and my parents um, had our pastor in Pakistan over for lunch. And we were talking, and he looked at me. He's like, so, John, what would you like to be? And I was like, oh, I would like to be a firefighter or a police officer. You know, and, and I started talking like a kid. Like, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a, I mean, what did you guys want to be when you were growing up? A, a what? A veterinarian. All the girls wanted to be a veterinarian and work with horses. 
and puppies. The boys wanted to be firefighters, manly men, maybe bodybuilders. I, I wanted to be a firefighter or a police officer at that age. And he looked at me and he said, well, what about a pastor? And I was like, oh no, I can't be a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor. Oh no. I said, I don't want to be a pastor. That's not something that I, I ever want to do. And I, I think I was like six or seven years old at that point. And I, come, I came to Toronto. I, I've been living here. God's led me on this incredible journey. I did the school of ministry. I interned at the church. I got hired on a staff at the church. And then got asked to be a youth pastor and, and then started a young adult church. And I look at my life and I think, oh my goodness, I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing. But oh my goodness, I don't think there's anything else I'd rather be doing. I can't believe, I, sometimes I look at my schedule, sometimes I look at my trip, sometimes I look at what I have to do and I'm like, there's so much to do. I can't believe I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, there's no way. I look at the time in my life, and I'm like, I don't have enough time to do what God's called me to do. And yet, somehow, I'm doing it. I don't understand this. And as I started praying, and as I started asking God why, he started revealing to me more of his grace, more of his grace in my life. And I want to share that with you today. So, let's look. At Zechariah 4, first Ze um, Zechariah sees a solid gold lampstand. Now, I understand it's a little bit difficult to get this picture in your mind. So I have some volunteers to help me. Earl, come on up here. Everyone, this is Earl. He's from Manitoba, where there's lots of people. Earl is going to be our solid gold lampstand. And Earl, be solid gold. Lampstand. And there, there is, a, there is a, bowl at the top of this lamp, a bowl at the top of this lampstand. Right. And, um, and there's lights on the top of this bowl. Oh, shoot. You know what? We need someone else. <laughs> Everyone, this is James. James is from Canada somewhere. There's lights at the, at the top of this bowl. <laughs> then, there are also two olive trees by it. So, girls, I need two olive trees. There are two olive trees. No. <laughs> I don't read that there's a wind blowing the olive trees. There's just two olive trees. And... Um, and it says later on that there are pipes going from the... <laughs> I did not know that this was the universal symbol for olive trees. <laughs> there are two olive trees beside the gold lampstand with the bowl on the top and the flames hanging out. And there are two... Um, uh, there are pipes leading. <laughs> right, lights, wonderful. You guys are inventive. I like that. Um, so there are two olive trees, and there's pipes connecting into the <laughs> gold bowl. Okay. Does this help with your imagination? No. Okay. Stay there. Just stay. We, we'll make this clear. This is solid gold, gold bowl, lights, olive trees going into them. What the heck does this have to do with grace? Well... I'm glad you asked, because I'm sure Zechariah wondered the same thing, because you know how I know this? Zechariah asked the angel, what the heck is this? And do you know what the angel said to him? The angel said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I find it very interesting that when Zechariah asks for an interpretation of the, of the vision that he's seeing, the angel says to him, this is God's word to you. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And for the longest time, I could not understand what these guys had to do with grace. It is a little bit difficult. And <laughs> I'm sure your shoulders are trying to get very, very sore. Um, and I'm sure the flames flickered, actually. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, I, would like to, I would like you to, to travel with me in your imagination, travel back to the time of the temple, to the time of the Israelites, there are no cars, there's no electricity, there's no tractors, there are olive trees, and there's lights, flickering lights. Thank you. Um, but the, the people, 
they don't have any way, they, they, they're not very modern. They don't have technology. All they have are their hands and their feet and flickering lights. However, here's the problem, is that in order to have light, you need a lamp. In order to have a lamp, you need a fuel source. And in this case, the fuel source happens to be olive oil, which burns quite well. But how do you get olive oil? Well, the process is very involved. You have to go to the olive trees. The olive trees. Thank you. You have to go to the olive trees, which apparently have two branches. And you have to pick the olives from them. And then you have to put them in a basket, take them home, put them into a press, press them until you just squeeze out a little bit of oil. And then you have to go back, get some more olives, put it in your basket, go to your house, put it in the press, squeeze it out until you get a little bit more oil. And you do this over and over and over and over again until you finally have enough to fill your lamp up. That sounds like a very hard process. That sounds like a very painful process. That sounds like something I would not want to do. I am grateful for electricity. I praise the Lord for ingenuity. <laughs> however, in this mo <laughs> however, in this moment, God's word, God's word is that the things that you have to do to get oil and bring it, <laughs> bring it to the, to, there were 10, there were 12 lights, thank you, flickering, <laughs> thank you. Um, the things that you had to do to get the oil, to bring it and put it into the bowl and set it on fire is no longer applicable because you see two olive trees with pipes leading into the bowl from where the lights are lit. God is saying in this that it is an end to our work. It is an end to us trying our hardest to keep our lamps lit. And instead, he is saying that there is an everlasting supply, a never-ending supply of his olive oil, his anointing into our lives, so that the fire of the Holy Spirit can live in us and burn on us. It does not depend upon you or upon me. It is only by God and by his grace alone. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You can give them a hand. Thank you very much. So Zechariah is seeing this vision. I'm sure it didn't quite look like that. But he sees this vision. And God's word, God starts speaking to him about grace. And he goes on to say, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, almighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of grace, grace to it. Zechariah here is prophesying to Zerubbabel, who's one of the leaders who's helping to build the new temple. And they're looking at it, and there seems to be insurmountable obstacles. People don't want it to be built. You, you can read about it in Ezra and in Nehemiah, how some of the opposition that comes against them as they're trying to build the temple. And here God is saying, no longer by your works, no longer by what you do, but instead, these things that are stopping you from doing what I've called you to do, these things that are stopping you from building the temple for my name, you will speak to them and they will be moved. This mighty mountain that you see will become level ground. And in its place, you will bring out a capstone, a crowning stone, a crowning achievement that will sit on the top and will be brought out to shouts of grace, grace to it. God's, God's word to us is the same as it has been for the past 2,000 years, ever since Jesus Christ died, is we are in a season of grace, not a season of works. We cannot be good enough. We cannot do what God has called us to do. You cannot do what God has called you to do. You can never be good enough. You can never be talented enough. You will never achieve what God has called you to do. So stop trying. See, if you try, if you try your hardest to do what God has called you to do, you will, you're actually becoming like that person who will go to the olive trees, pick the olives off, go and press them, take the oil out, and put it in the lamp and light it on fire. You will be the one who will, if, 
if you are the one who is trying to make your dreams from God come true, your dreams probably aren't big enough. They're probably not fully God. Because it's only God who will be able to do in your life what you are unable to do. And we need to learn how to stop, how to stop all of our works, how to stop all of our striving, and just be, so that God's grace can come in and God can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. See, God, God said to me, he said, John, my church is very good. My church is very good at knowing mercy, but my church struggles with grace. See, because mercy and grace are gifts of God. But the difference between mercy and grace is mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. If you think of it in terms of a bank account, mercy takes you out of the red, but grace puts you in the black. Is We understand that, yes, we are sinners saved by grace, that, yes, we sinned. Yes, we deserve death. And God didn't give us death. Thank you, God. We understand that. We have no problem with that. And most of us have had a moment of revelation where we have learned. We have all of a sudden it's been revealed to us. I can do nothing by myself. Oh, God, I need help. God, I need saving. Jesus, you are my savior. And we walk away and we're like, wow, I'm saved. Wow. But then immediately we have this mindset of, okay, I must read my Bible. I must pray. I must go out and share this with everyone. I must go out and lead 10 million people to Jesus. I, we instantly get into this mode of, I must do this, I must do this, I must do this, I must do this. At that moment, we stop ourselves from receiving God's grace. We have received his mercy, which is not, des- not getting what we deserve. But we've actually stopped ourselves from receiving his grace, which is getting what we don't deserve, which is getting all the the riches of the inheritance that's for you in Christ. The riches that God has laid up, the, how he longs to pour his love, his grace, his affection on you. How he longs to shower you with his glory. We actually stop ourselves from receiving that. And God's grace, God's grace in your life will cause the mountains in your life, will cause the obstacles in your life to become level ground. God's grace in your life will, ma- will actually achieve what he has purposed to do in your life, and it will become a crowning achievement. It says in Psalm 18 that God's gentleness makes you great. God desires your call to greatness. God desires you to do great things. Did he know that you were called to greatness? Did he know that you were called to do the impossible? You are called to do the incredible. You are called to be men and women on fire, running after Jesus Christ with all of your heart, setting the people around you on fire with the fire of the Holy Spirit. But it does not depend upon you to keep that fire lit. If you try to keep that fire lit through reading your Bible and through praying and through going out and evangelism, and, and doing church events and church activities. I'm not saying these things are bad. I'm saying that when we look to them to keep the fire of the Holy Spirit lit in our hearts, it becomes a lot of work. When I started getting this revelation that I needed to pray more. So I started saying, okay, God, I'm going to pray. So I'll go into my room. I'll close the door. I don't know if any of you have ever tried this, but i close the door, and I look at my clock, and I'm like, I'm going to pray for an hour. Oh, I'm going to pray for an hour. And I close my eyes and I start praying. And, you know, I'm praying in tongues. I'm casting out devils. I'm, I'm feeling mountains shake and earth move. I know nations are being saved as I'm praying. That's incredible. I feel heaven coming to earth and angels ascending and descending. It's wonderful. And I'm like, it's got to be at least half an hour. And I open my eyes and five minutes have gone by. You're like, ah, oh, my goodness, I'm never going to be able to do this. I would come back from our youth camps or from Fresh Wind, and I'd be so passionately in love with Jesus that I would say, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to read my entire Bible through. And every year, I would start a Bible reading plan on New Year's. And I got really good at reading Genesis. (laughs) Around the time I got to Leviticus, it was really tough. And I I would find myself, I would promise myself, I'm going to read the Bible through. And I start reading, and I start reading, and I start reading. And I find I don't even remember what it is I'm reading. 
And pretty soon I lose my passion. Pretty soon I lose my drive. And I just stop. And you know what I find now? I find that I'm so in love with Jesus that I pray and I don't even realize how much time has gone by. I find that I'm so in love with Jesus that I'll start reading my Bible and I'll just read and I'll read and I'll read and I'll read because I have this desire and I have this hunger to know him. I'm so in love with Jesus that I look at my schedule and other people, I, I, I have people walking by my desk and they'll look at my, at my calendar and I have all these different multicolored events based on my calendar and someone else's calendar and trips and personal and business and all this stuff. And they'll look at it and be like, wow, that's one busy calendar. And sometimes they'll look at it and be like, wow, that's a busy calendar. And I don't know how I do it except by the grace of God because I've learned that I just need to stop If God's calling me to do this, God will give me the grace to do what he's called me to do. And I want to ask you tonight, are you trying to do what God has called you to do? Are you trying to do it in your own strength? Are you trying to do it by your talents or by your good looks? We have a lot of good-looking people in the room tonight. We have a lot of good-looking people over the internet, too. But are you trying to do it by your strength? Because you can. It's not easy, but you can. Probably be really, really discouraging and really, um, really draining for you, but you can. Because, you know, Jeremiah prophesied something about this. If you turn with me to Jeremiah, turn to Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, 5 says this. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, the salt land where no one lives. Who wants to live there? No one. I see that hand. I'm just kidding. Everyone look. Don't look. Um, But Jeremiah also goes on to say, But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out his roots by the stream. It does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. You are called to be like that, like that tree. You are called to live in that land. You are called to live in a land where even if drought is there, even if there's no rain, you will have supernatural provision, supernatural abundance in your life to be fruitful at a time when everything around you seems to be dying. You will, you will enter into a season where God's grace is on you and you will be doing things that are, way, that are way beyond your wildest dreams. If you learn how to make him your strength, if you learn how to turn your heart towards him. Because he sa- Jeremiah says here in ver- verse 5, Cursed is the one who trusts a man who depends on flesh for his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. And I think that's the best picture that I can possibly use of grace. Because Jesus says in John 15, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Remain in me and I will remain in you. I find it amazing that he does not say, come to me and then stay in me. Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves. When we were hopeless and we were separated from him, he took us and he placed us into himself. And then all he said was, now remain here. Remain where I have placed you. Remain in this place of grace. Did you know that you can remove yourself from that place of grace? You remove yourself by saying, if, the, if God's over here, you remove yourself by saying, I'm able to do this. I trust in myself, in my good looks, in my strength, in my talents. Did you know that one of the, one of the dangers I've seen as people learn about forgiveness, they learn about um, inner vows, they learn about better judgments, they learn about expectancies, they learn about all these things. And instead of trusting in God to deliver them, they start trusting in these formulas to deliver them. Those things are, th- those things are all good. Those things are all legitimate, yes. But we need to use them when we're submitted to the Spirit of God. Because I have, there have been times that I have been hurt. There was one time I, I had, I used to have this, this awesome car. I thought it was awesome. Everyone around me thought it was a piece of junk. It was a 19, it was awesome. It was a 1990 Toyota Corolla. And this thing was my baby, okay? I, I, I got it when I was really young. I gr- it had grown up with me. I was only like four years older than it. 
So we related. We had lived through the same eras of life. And um, this thing was incredible. It had a uh, crack in the windshield. And the windshield was held on by duct tape. It had cracks in the floor so that if you were driving on the highway and you dropped your cell phone, you might not get it back. Um, it had, like, paint was flaking off everywhere. The gas tank was rusted through so that I would, I would drive up, fill my tank up at the gas pump, and then drive away, and it would look like my car had peed because of this giant puddle that was left behind at the gas pump. And I love this car. This car was amazing. And I used to work at Blockbuster. And so one day, I parked my car outside. And I, I was working. I parked my car in the parking lot. And my friend comes running in. He's like, dude, this truck just backed into your car and took off. I was like, oh, my baby. And I booked it to the parking lot just in time to see this truck driving away with red paint left on his bumper. And I look at my car, and the side of it is all scraped up. Like, it was, so, it was so bad. The light had fallen off. It was just horrible. My poor little car. I, I teared up a little bit. Um, I was like, I left you out here alone. Oh, my goodness. I'll never do it again. And, <laughs> and I, I went back inside, and I was so angry. I was like, God, I forgive them. God, I give you my bitter root judgment. The trucks are going to run into my... And I, and I prayed all the prayers, every single one of them. I think I even prayed them twice, just to be sure. And you know what's funny is that God brought up all those issues later on. Because he said to me, he said, John, in that moment, you just prayed a prayer. You didn't actually trust me. In that moment, you trusted in the formula to save you. You didn't actually turn your heart towards me and let me come in and guide you in that. And I realized what happened is that I stopped myself from receiving God's grace. God's grace, which was more than able to come into my life, to come and to save me, to come and to set me free. You know what? Great story. Kind of a great story. I got pulled over. The cop said my car wasn't roadworthy. I had to take it off the road. I ended up giving it away. I was given another car. I, I gave it away. Sorry, let me explain. I gave it away to a program that teaches people how to work on cars, gives them life skills, fixes up the car, and then sells it, and uses that profit to help drug addicts and alcoholics get on with their lives. And that's what I did. I didn't just give it to, like, one of my youth. That wouldn't have been cool. Um, you know, I gave it away, and God ended up giving me another car. Way better, the car of my dreams. It was, it was awesome. He just gave me a car, a car worth about nine or $10,000. It was incredible. And if you want to know the story, come up and ask me, or if you're on the internet, email me, and I'll tell you. And Jay Shankar at catchthefire.com, just in case. Um, but we have this opportunity to receive from God everything that we need. We are called to be plugged into the vine. Jesus is the vine. From him, our life flows. And if we try to live our lives, even with the best of intentions, we will find ourselves getting tired, getting burnt out, getting stressed out, getting um, having short tempers with the people we love because it all depends on us. Some of you are called to ministry. Some of you are called to travel the world and preach and, and see incredible signs and wonders and miracles. It does not depend on you. It does not depend on how well you can preach. It does not depend upon how much of the Bible you know. Just get to know God. Read the Bible, pray, spend time with Him. But get to know Him and have His grace flow into your life. Because when it does, He will fulfill everything that was prophesied over you. Everything that you feel you are called to. God is the one who gave that word to you and God is the one who can fulfill what He's called you to do. Are you trying to pick olives and keep your own fire lit? Or are you tapping into the grace that has been released to you? Because his grace is way better, way more superior, way bigger than anything that I have ever known. His grace is overwhelming. 
His grace will come into your life and keep coming like a wave. Hey, it will come like a wave after wave after wave after wave into your life. It will set you free. It will bring favor into your life. God will um, start opening doors that you never thought would open. All because of his grace. And all that, all that's required of you is to turn your heart to him instead of away from him. In Jeremiah 17, there's some good indications that you're not living in grace. It says, he will be like a bush in the wastelands in verse 6, 17 verse 6. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. Do you feel like you're a bush in the wasteland? Do you feel like you're not prospering? And I don't just mean financially. I mean emotionally. I mean spiritually. Are you prospering? Is your soul getting along well? Or do you feel like you're dwelling in a parched place? Like you're in this place where, yeah, even though I'm at school, even though I'm at church, even though I go to church all the time, I still feel like I'm in this dry place. Because if you feel like that, that's probably a good indication that you're not connected to his grace. And I felt like tonight God wants to take our hearts and he wants to reconnect us to the rivers of his grace. He wants to reconnect us to his love flowing into our hearts. He wants to reconnect us to the oil of the Holy Spirit being released upon us. Did you know that's what Jesus the Christ means? Jesus the Christ literally means the anointed one. Means the oily one. God wants to anoint you and anoint me with the oil of the Holy Spirit coming upon our lives. As Sarah talked about earlier, the oil of the Holy Spirit falling upon your life so that you are passionately on fire for God. So it does not depend upon you. You do not have to worry about guarding your fire for God. All you have to do is worry about falling more in love with him, about walking more with him. About God, how can I know your voice better? God, how can I speak to you better? God, how can I get to know you better? When you do, that fire will be lit and that fire will be ignited. And it will never, ever go away. Because you will be so in love with him that you will give up whatever it costs just to have him. And I even feel like that's what God's saying tonight. That's to give up whatever it is that you're holding on to in order that you may gain him. <laughs> to give up. You know, it, it's easy for me to tell you where I'm weak. Sometimes it's harder for me to tell you where I'm strong. But Paul, the Apostle Paul had a great verse about this in Philippians 4.17. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In fact, let's turn there and let's take a quick look at it. Paul, I think this is one of the most incredible verses in the Bible because Paul, man, he starts talking about how he knows all these different circumstances. He, he says in Philippians 4, 11, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned that to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And so here, here it is in 13, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I think sometimes we can so easily run to God when we have tough moments, when we're like, oh God, I've just lost my job. Oh God, my world has just crashed around me. Oh God, I don't have enough money coming in right now. Oh God, I have to preach and I don't know how to do this. <laughs> oh God, there's someone standing in front of me who needs healing. Help, help, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Did you know God honors those prayers? But did you also know that it's a greater sign of maturity to turn to God when you're doing well? Wow, God, thank you for the freedom that you're bringing into my life. God, thank you for the grace that you put in my life. God, thank you for how, how alive I am in you. Thank you for the joy that I have. Thank you for the freedom that I have. Thank you for the friends that I have. See, Paul says, I've learned the secret to be, I've learned the secret of being content in any and every circumstance. And that's what I would like to challenge us with. That's what I would like to challenge you with. 
is to consistently turn your heart towards the Lord Jesus Christ and have his grace come into you. Because sometimes the grace of God will allow you to enjoy what's going on. Sometimes the grace of God will allow you to endure what's going on. But it's only by his grace. It's only by his grace. I have learned that, you know, everything I am, everything I will be is only by the grace of God. And sometimes I have horrible days and I'm just like, God, I just need your grace right now. Help me. And sometimes I have wonderful days and I say, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you that I'm alive in you. But as I've learned, as I've learned to be reliant upon his grace in my life, I have found myself stepping into a life I have never dreamed as possible. I find myself stepping into this place where I'm like, wow, God, I'm so full of joy. I'm so full of peace. I'm so full of patience. I'm so full of kindness. Wow, God, I never knew it was possible to live life like this. And my prayer for you tonight is that you will get to know the life of Christ flowing in you, the life of Christ that has been freely given to you, the life of Christ that is abundantly available to you right now. It's available to you right now, right here. You don't need to wait for it. You don't need to fast for 40 days before you can receive the grace of Jesus Christ. You don't need to read your Bible. You don't need to um, know every single verse in here before you can receive his grace. So stop trying and pause and turn your heart towards him. Jesus, I receive your grace. Wow. And you will feel his grace flowing into you and strengthening you. Why don't we just pray? Holy Spirit, I ask that right now your grace is here. I ask that you will come, Lord, with your grace. I thank you that your grace is here. And Jesus Christ, we turn our hearts and we turn our affection towards you. Hey. And just where you are right now, just fix your attention. Put your focus on him. Turn your affection towards him. And just start to tell him I love you. Just start to turn your heart back towards him. God, forgive me for the areas I've tried to do things by myself. I feel like um, there's someone listening who is struggling with the situation in their job. You've done everything you possibly know how to do and nothing's changed, nothing's improved. And I feel like God's saying to you, just wait. I'll let my grace come in. Ask me to help you in this. Hey, Students, I bless you to grow in freedom. I bless you to grow in the plans and the purposes that God has for you. I bless the prophetic words that have been spoken over your life. But I also bless you to know the grace of God coming into your life right now. Hey, there it is. Can you feel it? Can you feel his grace pouring into you? Father, we receive your waves of grace. Father, we thank you that we are in a season of grace, a season of unlimited grace, a season of unlimited favor. And Father, I ask that right now it would be poured into our hearts and poured into our spirits. Father, every area where we are disconnected from you, I ask that you would come and that you would reconnect us, God, and that grace would flow from the olive trees. Hey, the oil of the Holy Spirit flowing into our lives. Feel his grace pouring into you. Feel his grace over your hands, over your body, over your heart, over your mind, over your family. Hey, drink of his grace. Father, by faith, we receive your grace. Lord, we stop our striving. Hey, Lord, we lay ourselves down and we choose to just be your sons and your daughters. Hey, I see, I see the breath of God just blowing in this place. I see the wind of God just coming and awakening hearts and reconnecting us to the vine, reconnecting us to his unlimited grace being poured out. Ha. Hey. Put your hand on your heart right now. And pray this, Lord, I receive your grace into my heart. (sighs) Lead me into freedom and teach me how to love like you love. Hey, and just pause and receive his grace flowing into you. (sighs) 
Hey. I feel his grace being poured out. Poured out upon you and poured out upon me. This grace cost Jesus everything he had and yet he gives it to us freely. Hey, yet he gives it to us freely. Wherever you go, whatever you do, there is a never-ending supply of grace being given to you. Wherever you go, grace, 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 grace. That's God's word to you. Grace, grace, grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is it with your spirits. That's why I think Paul had a revelation of this and he would write, may the grace of Jesus Christ be with you. The grace of our Father be with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you wherever you go. Hey. And all it takes for us as his beloved sons and daughters is to pause and to receive his grace. Hey, I would find myself, I would be at work, and I would start getting stressed out with how much I had to do. And I would, pause my, I would force myself to pause. I wouldn't pause myself. I wouldn't hit the pause button. I would stop. And just in my chair, I would say, God, I receive your grace. Help me. I rely on you. And then I would just take two seconds, by faith receive his grace, and I'll go back to work. And you know, I find I would be way more productive than I ever could have been by just working through. I found that I was, I, I was just able to do way more. And Jeremy, it's all right if, if we just call you up. And uh, what we're going to do is I feel like we need to soak in the grace of God. We need to rest in the grace of God. We need to we need to take some time just to receive his grace into our lives, to rejoice in his grace, and to live in his grace. And his grace will empower you. His grace will set you free. His grace will enable you. Did you know that God has called you, that God's kingdom is not a kingdom of lack? God's kingdom is a kingdom of fullness. Sometimes we look at our lives and we look at what we're lacking. Oh, God, I could never go preach because I'm scared of people. Oh, God, did you know how messed up my childhood was? I can never preach. God's like, John, my kingdom is a kingdom of fullness, not a kingdom of lack. You are lacking nothing. And God says to you tonight, you are lacking nothing. His grace is freely giving everything to you that you need for your life. The areas that you don't think you can do, well, guess what? You can do it because God's bigger. So, um, how many of you feel like you need that? You need the grace of God in your lives. I just want you to find a place on the floor. Hey, and even and if you don't feel like you need it, but you would want some more of it, find a place on the floor. If you're at home, you don't need to find a place on the floor. You're welcome to if you like, but you can receive his grace by faith. Whether you're washing the dishes, whether you're in the shower, I hope you're not watching this on the internet in the shower. That'd be a little bit weird. It doesn't matter where you are. I, one of my favorite things to do is while I'm brushing my teeth, I'll pray and I'll say, God, I receive your grace in my life. While I wash the dishes, God, I receive your grace. Hey, because I've realized it's not dependent on my circumstances. It's dependent on him and on his faithfulness. And so, Papa, we receive your grace tonight. Lord, we receive you in the very core of our being. Jesus Christ, I thank you that you are given that you are fulfilling your word to us. Jesus Christ, I thank you that you are giving us the fullness of your kingdom that we have not received. That we have not received a junior Holy Spirit. We have not received a junior spirit of grace. Hey. But Lord, I thank you that we have received the same spirit that was on you. Your Holy Spirit in our lives. And Jesus Christ, we say yes to you tonight. We say yet. Lord, we say yes to you. We say yes to your grace. Thank you that we do not need to earn it. Thank you that's not by our own strength. Thank you that's not because that's not by what we can do, God, but it's because of who you are. And so, Lord, tonight we throw ourselves onto your faithfulness. 
we throw ourselves onto your grace. Everything that we are, everything we, we will be, God, we say is yours. Lord, come. Hey, and let your grace, like oil, flow into our lives. Let your grace flow into our lives right now. The oil of the Holy Spirit flowing into your lives, igniting a fire within your heart that will burn, that will burn forever because of his grace flowing into you. Hey, I see this pipe being connected from your hearts up to heaven and just this constant dripping of grace coming down like an IV, just drip, 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 drip. Hey, drip, 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 drip. His grace being released upon your life. His grace is what will heal you. His grace is what will set you free. <sighs> but it's His grace in your life. Father, we trust you and we love you. You are our strength. You are our hope. We make our refuge in you, Jesus Christ. Welcome. Some of our ministry team may just come around and pray for you. We just come around and, and bless you with the grace of God. I bless you to receive his grace, to be transformed by his grace and transformed by his love.
Father, we pray for Emily's, Amber's family, this friend that committed suicide. Father, we ask that your presence, your grace would surround that family, that you would hold them close. Speak your words of comfort. Speak your words of hope. Father, I pray that Amber may be a tool that is used of you to bring light to a family that has been devastated. Come and show yourself strong, O oh Lord, within that family. We pray for Dwayne, who's struggling with depression. Father, you are his answer. You who give life, pour life into Dwayne. We just come against any assignment of the enemy over him. And we say no more. We pray for Janet and her mental health. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. Let life flow in, O oh Lord. It is you that has given us a sound mind. And so we turn to you. Our hope, our answer, our comforter. We pray for Michael. And the pain in his teeth, we say no more in Jesus' name no more. All that pain lifts off right now. All that pain goes. Let your spirit flow in, O oh Lord. We pray for Jill and any joint pain that may be there. Father, I pray that the oil of your Holy Spirit would flow into those joints that that pain would no longer be her inheritance at all we come against any generational issues and we speak forgiveness over those preceding generations we ask for your grace to be poured out again Father pour it out over Jill pray for Mariah and her right ear Lord we don't know if that's pain or if she can't hear out of it but you know and so we just stand together with you let your healing flow in oh Lord your comfort let the life of Jesus flow in Pray for Sean, high cholesterol and undetectable illnesses. Again, Lord, you know what those are. This is easy for you. Lord, in the same way that we've seen with a word, you heal backs. You can give sight to the blind. You can raise the dead. Cover Sean with that life, Lord. Your healing. Pray for Ron, his organ and joint issues. Lord, he's asking for peace of mind. We know where that comes from, Lord. That only comes from you. So come. Come and fill him, Lord, with your peace, that peace that passes understanding. Soak us in your love, oh God. Soak us in your mercy. Soak us in your grace. Love the way you father us. Love the way you care for us. 
Oh, flow, Holy One. Flow, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your presence here. We drink deeply of your peace and your grace. We receive that oil of your presence tonight. Send another wave over us, Holy Spirit. We choose tonight to step back into grace. We choose you. We're just about to um, go offline now, so if, if you're watching and you haven't received prayer yet, please feel free to um, give a call to our, our prayer lines. Uh, the number should be coming up on your screen there, but it's 1-800-759-0700. Um, so you can give them a call there, and they would be more than happy to to pray for you and, and to bless you and, and to just share the Father's love with you. I just want to thank you again, all of you who have joined us tonight, and we just bless you as you go home and throughout the week to just know the grace and the peace and the presence of God, <laughs> just at whatever you're doing, at work, at home, with your family. Wow. Yeah, we just love your presence. Thank you for... Thank you for coming, Jesus. Just doing good things. <laughs> 